Welcome to the TrainML platform overview. TrainML is a GPU as a service platform that lets you get up and running on GPUs with just a few clicks, without the need for managing servers, learning a new framework, or enduring a lengthy software implementation. Our user experience is specifically designed to make the platform easy to integrate into any machine learning development process, as this video will demonstrate. To simulate a typical machine learning workflow, we will use the Kaggle RSNA Pneumonia Detection Challenge dataset and code that can be found in our public GitHub repo. You can log into the platform with any Google account from our website at www.trainml.ai. The first step in the process is to load the data onto the TrainML platform. To do this, we can use the dataset's capability to automatically create a reusable dataset from external sources. Several different source types are supported, including your local computer. Since the data we will use is from a Kaggle competition, we will select Kaggle, Competition, and input the competition name in the path field. Click Create, and TrainML does the rest of the work for you. You're only charged to store the dataset once per month, no matter how many jobs you end up using it for, and they're always cached on the local NVMe SSD storage for lightning fast performance. Once the dataset is ready, we can view some details about it, including its size, the directory structure, and how many files are in each directory, and the ongoing monthly cost of the dataset if you're above the 50 gigabyte storage free tier. Now that we have our data, the easiest way to start building a model is with a notebook. When you create a notebook, you can select from among the available GPUs. We provide GPUs as affordable as 10 cents an hour, all the way up to the latest Ampere-based RTX 3090 for less than a dollar. The data section is where I can add the data set I just created to this notebook. Additionally, if I already have the code I'm planning to use in a Git repo, you can add that automatically during notebook creation. TrainML supports both public and private Git repositories. When I click Next, I review the details I specified and start the notebook. Before it starts, the notebook will download the model code, cache the data set to the local storage of the GPU-enabled system, and build a dedicated and permanent environment for the notebook that will remain as long as the notebook exists. You don't have to reinstall libraries or re-download files or other dependencies every time you restart the notebook. Once it's ready, I can click Open to access the JupyterLab environment. Once I'm connected, I see the folders with the data I specified pre-populated. The Kaggle dataset is inside the input folder, and I can drill down to see the DICOM files, and the model code is in the models folder. From here, I can open my notebook, viewing the outputs of previous runs or running it again, open any other Python files in the text editor, or launch a terminal to run scripts or other commands. This particular model requires some data preprocessing before training, so I'll run that here first. Once that's done, I can go back and run the notebook again to make sure everything is working before I start running more serious training jobs. One of the great things about starting with a notebook is that you can actually convert them into training jobs even while they're still running. To do this, I'll go back to the notebook dashboard, select my job, and click copy. One of the copy types is convert to training job. I give the new job a name and scroll down to see some additional options. I'm going to keep the same data set for input, uh, but now that I'm creating a training job, I'll have the ability to specify where to save the training run's output. In this case, I'm going to select local as the output type so that the job automatically copies its output to my local computer. For the path, I'll just paste the directory path of an empty folder on my local computer. Training jobs allow you to run multiple workers to perform different training experiments at the same time. In this case, I'll run five workers because I want to try five different optimizers and compare their results. Now I just have to provide the command for each worker to initiate training with the parameters I need and click copy. I'll be automatically navigated to the training jobs dashboard where I can watch the new training job get copied from the notebook and then initialize and provision. Once the job is running, I can monitor its progress by viewing the real-time logs of all the workers in one central view. If I want to filter down to just one of the workers, I can use the drop-down at the top.
I can also view details about the job by clicking the job name and seeing the status of each worker and what command it's running, or even stop individual workers if the training isn't progressing well based on the log messages I'm seeing. One thing to note is that the notebook never stopped during this process, so I can continue working on my model while the experiment is running. When the workers finish training, they automatically terminate and billing stops. In this example, however, I selected the local data option, so the workers are waiting for me to connect to receive the results before they stop. Connecting is as simple as copying the command from the connect dialog and running it in a Python environment that has the trainML, CLI, and SDK installed and configured. I can pull up the destination folder in my file explorer to watch the files come in. When I connect, I also see the same log stream from the workers in case you prefer to see it, the output in the terminal. Once all the files are copied to my computer, the job is considered finished. I can open up one of the worker's zip files to find intermediate and final checkpoint files, as well as a folder of the validation images with annotations, so I can visually verify it's working. Additionally, the output folder contains the TensorBoard logs for the training run, so I can launch a TensorBoard instance locally to examine the collected data. Once I'm satisfied with my hyperparameters, the next step is to run a marathon training with the best parameters to tune the model more thoroughly. Training jobs are once again the best tool for this job. This time, instead of copying the notebook, I'm going to create a training job directly from the dashboard. I will use similar settings as before, but with two key differences. For the output type, instead of saving the model artifacts to my computer, I will store them as a trainML model. This will allow me to reuse the trained model on future inference jobs, as we will see shortly. Additionally, since I'm not copying this from a notebook where I've already ran the data preprocessing, I have to prefix the worker command with the data preprocessing script. I'll also add the optimized settings for marathon training. Click Next and Create to start the job. Once the job is provisioned and starts running, I can watch the logs come in like before to monitor its progress. Some marathon trainings can run for days. This one is configured to run for about 12 hours. Because I'm sending the output to a trainable model instead of my local computer, I don't have to worry about connecting to the job before it finishes. It will do the rest automatically. Once it's finished, I can take a look at the details to see the total runtime and cost, or view or download the entire log extract from the training run. However, the really interesting thing is when I navigate to the model section, I now see a new model with the name just like the training job I created. If I click on the name, I can see similar details to a dataset to make sure everything got created properly. This model can now be selected as the basis for any job type, but it's most useful for running inference jobs. As an example, I have another set of DICOM files that have no labels, so I want to run those through my newly trained model and see what it predicts. The images are on my local computer, and I'll want to receive the annotated images locally as well, so I'll clean up my output folder to get ready. Now I'll create an inference job, give it a name, select a GPU, and in the data section, instead of selecting a data set, I'll specify where the job should get its data from. Unlike with datasets, this data is removed after the job is complete, so it's designed for one-time use data. Since the data is on my local computer, I'll select local as the input type and specify the path of my local computer that contains the new DICOM files. I'll use the same settings for output data as we did for the help of parameter experiment. This time, instead of using a Git repo that only contains model code, I can load the fully trained model by selecting trainML model as the model type and selecting the model we created in the previous training run. For the command, I'll specify a command that does data preprocessing on the new files and runs the prediction script. 
I'll click Next and Create to start the job. Since I'm using local data as the job's input, I must connect to it before it can start. The user interface will give me a hint that I need to connect to continue, so I click the Connect button and run the connection command in my Python environment as before. Once I connect, the data will automatically start transferring, and once it's complete, the job will start. As before, I can monitor the job logs in real time, and as long as I stay connected to the job, it will automatically upload its results when it finishes and terminate. Now that the job is finished, we can take a look at the results. I can see the connection automatically terminated when the upload finished, and if I check the folder, I have a zip file with the results. If I unzip the file, I see annotations.json file that contains a JSON representation of the image boxes, and in the images folder, I can see my new images annotated by my previously trained model. Inference jobs are great for this type of batch inference work, but in other situations, there's a need to get inference results one at a time, in seconds or milliseconds rather than in minutes. This is what TrainML endpoints are for. Endpoints allow you to deploy your model code as a REST API without the need to build web application code, configure reverse proxies, or maintain web servers. I can deploy a new endpoint from the dashboard, give it a name, and select my GPU type. I'll select the same model I used for batch inference as the model for the endpoint, and then I'll configure the route I want to use to access my inference code with an HTTP request. I'll specify the file the code is in, the name of the function to call, as well as the expected request body for the request. Note, in this case, the DICOM file will be encoded as a Base64 string so that it can be included in a JSON payload. Once my endpoint is running, I can get the API address and configure my front end to use it to submit predictions. Now I can upload new DICOM files, send them to the API, and display the predicted results. As we've seen, TrainML makes it easy to take models all the way through the machine learning development workflow. We loaded a dataset, built an initial model in a notebook, ran a parallel hyperparameter experiment, saved the results of our marathon training job as a reusable model, and use that model to run batch inference and deploy a REST endpoint. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out our documentation site at docs.trainml.ai or shoot us an email at sales at trainml.ai. If you run into any challenges running this example or anything else, you can contact us at support at trainml.ai. Thanks for watching.